Hello friends and family, people all over the world. Welcome to Guernsey. I've been here for about a month now. Uh, and if you want to know what this traffic junction is all about, I've never seen anything like it before in my life until I came here. Then stay tuned because I'm gonna take you around to show you some things that you might not know about Guernsey. Let's do it. And this is La Table de Pion. This is a, a place right out here, pretty much as far west as you can go in the Channel Islands since about the 15th century. Well, there used to be something called the Chevrolet, which would be kind of a march around the island. The, the people in charge of uh, maintaining the roads, the noblemen, would bring their footmen around and they would come and have their lunch here on their routes around the island, inspecting the state of the roads and the buildings, making sure that Guernsey was still accessible. And you can see why when you come out here in January, like I am now, it's windy. It's a place very much open to the elements. Look at this in January. This mysterious circle here has also been known over the centuries as a place where witches and fairies meet and it's commonly known in English as the fairy ring. So there you go. You've got a lighthouse over there. And over here you've got the island of Lihu, which is also said to be the westernmost point in the Channel Islands. So kind of depends on the tides really. It's very, very tidal here. The second uh, most extreme tide in the entire world here in uh, Guernsey. And actually for, oh, a few hours every day, most days, not every day, but most days you can actually walk across a causeway between mainland Guernsey here and this island, Lihu over here. And we'll do that at some point, but you can't today look completely submerged underwater the causeway. So here is Fort Pesary, and we're on this uh, kind of peninsula at the extreme west of Guernsey. It's called Torteville. Very cold and windy today, but a nice brisk walk nonetheless. Wow, so apparently during the Second World War, when the Germans were occupying this island, uh, the German forces built an earthwork machine gun position on the short and western wall of this fort. Wow. Here to protect the southern half of Rockane Bay, just here. Beautiful bay. So I thought today for my first Channel Islands vlog, I would take you on a little walk with me. Well, two and a half hours. We won't film all of it, of course. Uh, but all the way from here, the westernmost point of Guernsey, and we're going to walk back to my digs in St Peter Port. Well, it was when I woke up this morning, a beautiful Sunday. Not a cloud in the sky, and now look. The weather really does change quickly around these parts. But we'll keep the sunglasses on in the hope of enticing the sun out. This is a signal rock up here, kind of like a rudimentary lighthouse where people on land could send signals out to the boats out in the bay. So Le Table de Pion in French, which is the original language which was spoken here, well, really Guernsey French or Guernesier as they uh, call it around these parts. Pion means pawns, just like in the, on your little chessboard. So there you go, French lesson for you, table of the knights, table of the pawns, whatever you want to call it, because that's where the footmen, the men on horseback, those loyal to those in charge of Guernsey over the years, would sit and have lunch together. Very communal. It often seems like there's a bit of confusion around the Channel Islands, like uh, what's their relationship with the United Kingdom? Um, are they independent? This kind of thing. Well, the Channel Islands are separated into two different jurisdictions. You've got the Bailiwick of Jersey, which basically is just the island of Jersey. Maybe the more famous one, and it's the, the island that makes New Jersey, New Jersey. So New Jersey over in the States is named after Jersey here, the island in the English Channel. And then you've got the Bailiwick of Guernsey, where I am. This is the main island of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, called Guernsey. And then you've got some other islands which are part of that Bailiwick, a Bailiwick being um, an area ruled by a bailiff. And you've also got some other islands. So you've got that little Lihu Island back over there, which we saw earlier. You've also got Sark, an island of about, ooh, 600 people. Then you've got Alderney, the most distant of all the Channel Islands, just off the coast of uh, Cherbourg in France. Oh, hello. And then you've also got the little island of Herm, just opposite St. Peter Port. So what about the relationship with the UK? Well, these islands are what they call crown dependencies. So 
they're technically independent, so each one has its own laws. Uh, some of them more intertwined, so within the bailiwick of Guernsey. Uh, some of the islands have the same laws, but they have their particularities between them. Jersey is completely separate. It's a separate from Guernsey as, well, kind of any other country would be separate from any other country, really. And they make their own laws. So, for example, here there's no VAT. You go into a restaurant, you don't pay a value-added tax. There is a special relationship with the United Kingdom. People here are British citizens. These are considered British islands. So they're not part of the British Isles, but they are considered British islands. And people here are British citizens. And the UK is responsible for these islands' international relations and also for their defence. And you can include the Isle of Man up uh, in the Irish Sea in that little group as well. Of course, if you look at a map, you will see that these islands are a hell of a lot closer to France than they are to the UK. So go figure, that's history for you. They used to be part of the Duchy of Normandy, but uh, obviously, you know, over time when uh, we had William the Conqueror and all that, and Britain and France was all kind of muddled up together. When eventually they separated again, the islands remained loyal to the crown. So rather than uh, rejoining Normandy, because classically they're thought of as islands belonging to Normandy, they stayed loyal to the British crown and became these crown dependencies. And I must say, it is a beautiful place to live. Look at this. It's like the perfect mixture between countryside and seascapes. And this is just in January. Imagine what it's like here in summer. In fact, there even seems to be some confusion from people who live here in the Channel Islands uh, about whether they are part of the UK or not. Uh, one person in particular I've met who I know watches the channel now, um, was trying to tell me that no, Alderney and Guernsey and all these islands, they are part of the UK, but they're not. Do your research, look it up on Google or whatever, or just believe me. So in conclusion, basically, the Channel Islands are independent in their own ways, these separate bailiwicks of uh, Guernsey and Jersey. Separate from the United Kingdom, they are not part of the United Kingdom, but they do hold a very close relationship with it. Oh, look at this cute little roadside stream we've got going on here. So I was hoping to show you an example of the beautiful flag of Guernsey, but instead we've got a pirate flag here. The pirates are taking over Guernsey, look. So here we go, I've arrived in my first village of this trip, of this little hike, and I have no idea what it's called because Guernsey's so small, 62 kilometers squared, only about 66,000 people live here. So it feels like all the places just merge into each other and wherever you go, there are houses. It feels a bit crowded sometimes, like very, very kind of rural vibe, but also houses everywhere you look. The villages kind of merge into each other. Oh, look at this. Plenty of classic cars as well, love it. Right, where from here? We're not gonna follow the sea today. We're gonna go inland. So bye bye sea. That one's off to London Gatwick with all rigged in the air. Pretty much the only airline on the island. Monopoly. Love it. Makes it nice and cheap to travel around, you know, when there's a monopoly. Look at these cute little streets. With another little stream here, look. I feel like I've been parachuted into an episode of Emmerdale, but it's on an island. For my international viewers, uh, Emmerdale, it's a British soap opera. Oh, there's another plane. And that one is off to Exeter. Look, with the rolling hills here, it's just like being in Cornwall, really. Look, absolutely beautiful. So people from Guernsey are called donkeys for some reason. Am. This is what they were called in the old Norman dialect that was spoken around here. Even the different regions of Guernsey, well, the different Duzen they're called, different parishes, I guess. You might call it something like that as a translation. People in this one in Tortival are called donkeys with horses' hooves. So they got all these strange nicknames from the past, which they still use. And of course, despite that Norman influence from the past, you know, these islands were originally French speaking, basically, Norman dialects. Everyone speaks English. It's all English everywhere. The house names, road names, yeah, they're kind of in this uh, Guernsey French, but pretty much nobody speaks French. I think I read somewhere it was like 0.5% of the population speaks uh, Guernsey French. Where am I going here? And I'm yet to find a speaker of it. So if you know a speaker, let me know. I'd love to meet them in the comments. Dogs playing on top of a blue post box, would you believe? Look, I'm not sure what VR stands for yet. I'll have to look that up. But Guernsey Post uses blue post boxes 
not red ones like in the UK. Who knew? The reason why the design is the same as in the UK is because it was part of the Royal Mail, part of just the general post office of the UK until 1969 and then Guernsey Post took over and their branding was blue so they repainted them in 1980 apparently. Nice blue letterboxes, I like them. Still no idea what VR stands for, so let me know in the comments. Oh, I'm sure it's not virtual reality. I know sometimes there are problems with the post here. Sending mail internationally is sometimes not allowed. Um, but it's not about virtual reality or sending posts virtually, I'm sure. And this is what a bus stop looks like in Guernsey. No little post or something showing all the routes, just bus written on the floor and you just stand there and you wait for the bus to come like that. Ah uh, yes, Road of the Wise. Okay, this probably does not look remarkable to you at all, but this is amazing. It's very rare in Guernsey that you walk along a road and there's pavement on both sides. This is incredible. Usually you're kind of having to hop foot it over, go between them as it will suddenly stop on one side and carry on on the other. But no, right here in the interior of the island now, you got both, incredible. St. Peter's Church, a place of hospitality, hope and humour. Look a bit more of that Guernsey French Salle Parrocial Saint Pierre du Bois. So this area is called Saint Pierre du Bois, Saint Peter of the Forest. And all that means is the parish office. There you go. Oh, they got toilets. Maybe I can use them. Incredibly, in this little village, the public toilets were open, nice and sleepy. On we go. There's Saint Pierre du Bois Community Hall. It was Saint Pierre du Bois. You've got everything you need, except a shop. Wouldn't mind something to drink and a little snack. So this is one of Guernsey's biggest curiosities, the famous filters. Look, it's a filter junction where it's painted with these kind of yellow zigzag pattern, well, yellow diamond pattern, which back home in the UK, it means that you shouldn't stop your car there. Now here, instead of mini roundabouts, they stick these in and basically whoever gets there first has right of way, even if it's straight on. So. You kind of have to approach them with a lot of caution. Uh, apparently, whoever arrives first has the right of way and then it goes around clockwise. I've not driven around one yet. Maybe I will at some point, let's see. Interesting setup. Personally, I think I would prefer a mini roundabout. And over here, I can finally show you the Guernsey flag. Okay, it's not the most beautiful example, but at least it's staying steady in the wind, look. So basically it's a St George's cross with a yellow Norman cross superimposed on the front of it. One which I really like because it shows that Guernsey's in touch with its present and its past. So uh, very much uh, a British island now and it shows that through uh, its association with England and the flag of St George, but the Norman cross as well. So it shows a country which is very much in touch with its past and present and very comfortable with, uh, with uh, multiple identities which uh, kind of forged together to form the Guernsey identity, I guess. It's not really up to me to talk about Guernsey identity, is it? I'm not from here or anything, so... Uh... Oh, there's a Morrison's Daily, right. We can get, finally get a snack, here we go. Right, so now I'm walking along Rue de Saint-André, not sure why it's plural, maybe there are more than one there, St. Andrew or whatever. And uh, this is very typical in Guernsey. You'll be walking along, there'll be a nice little footpath and then suddenly it disappears. <laughs> and just as it disappears, the road looks more major than before as well, look. With these uh, blind curves and stuff. So, yeah, if you are out and about walking here, you know, do be a bit careful on the roads. Make sure you're on the outside of the curve as you walk around so that people can see you in the cars. And of course, it would be very dark at night here, you can imagine. So carry a torch. Sometimes you get lucky and the path reappears. And if you do want a quieter path so not to go along uh, the main roads, oh look, it, it comes back and then disappears again. Look at that, that's very Guernsey. Right, uh, they have these Rue Tranquille priority for uh, horses, bicycles and pedestrians. Recommended speed 15 miles per hour. So you'll get these kinds of little roads. The Rue, little streets, it translates as. And they're streets that cars are allowed to go along but they have to give way to pedestrians and everything, uh, horses, bicycles. Safer for pedestrians like me, unlike this road, look. Of course, I have no idea where I'm going. I've only been here for a month, so I have to follow Google Maps, really. Look. And he says the car's feeling a bit frustrated. 
getting stuck behind pedestrians or cyclists on these tiny little roads. Right, can you see that over there? I'm pointing at it, hopefully you can see it. That is apparently the world's smallest chapel. It's called the Little Chapel, imaginatively. Even from here, it looks too small for me to walk inside. Wow, there it is. All right, so here we go. It says, please, please donate to the Little Chapel Foundation. A shiny two pound coin will help our funds to soar. Well, I don't have any two pound coins, but I'll tell you what I do have. And this will come as a surprise to lots of you, my British viewers especially. I have two Guernsey one pound notes. Yes, they still have one pound notes here. Look, there's a, some guy on there. So here we go. I'm going to donate now. Two Guernsey pounds in there. Okay, the ceramic pieces here for the steps were donated by at Wedgwood Barliston. So I guess uh, from some kind of ceramic, China, whatever, plate makers or make teapots or whatever, broken bits they've donated to decorate this chapel. Wow, look at this. Oh, wow, wow, cool. Hey, you've got a nice little star there. Beautiful. Yeah, it's like Dutch style, the breeder. Blue and white. So it was built by one guy, apparently. Unfortunately, you do get quite a few tourists around here, so it gets a bit noisy, especially on a Sunday afternoon like today. Look, decorated with shells. Wow, look at these. Oyster shells, I think. <laughs> Look, Mallorca. It's a bit random. Cornwall. Wow, <laughs> it's like, a, it's an underground grotto really. Apparently it could house four people, like a bunker. Wow, so apparently during the Spanish flu epidemic, just over a hundred years ago, this place was a bit like a hospital. It's returning agricultural students brought the disease with them. And the people of the village here, Levobili, or Levoxbelets, they probably say here, were infected. Wow. What a place. I wasn't expecting it to be so big inside because it looks tiny, but they've got the grotto underneath. And you exit here, look. You've got a couple of doors down here, but they're closed to the public now, look. Ah, oh, a little pond has been put in here. And if you do pass by, make sure you stick some money in there. You know me, I'm not a religious man, but... Yeah, it's kind of cool and should be kept. This little grotto with a chapel on the top. Random. But cool. Right, let's crack on. So I just want to say hi to Joshua Patricio, my latest subscriber. I've just been told via a notification on my phone. So hopefully I'll get this out for you to watch later today with your tea. First time for a while doing filming and uploading in one day. If you do come here and you want to use internet on your phone, then be careful. Data roaming isn't always included in all plans for Guernsey. So for example, if you're like me and your UK number was with uh, Labara Mobile, then uh, yeah, you'll need to get a SIM card when you come here if you want to use internet going around. But some companies do offer uh, data roaming for free or as a little extra uh, when you come to Guernsey. So be careful with that. Make sure you uh, do your research before you come. Obviously, because it's not technically part of the UK, uh, they don't have to offer um, the mobile roaming service, I guess, as uh, 
included in your price plan. So this part of the island is called St Andrews and they've got the St Andrews Cross, look. It's just like being in Scotland, lovely. I mean, look how confusing this is. Everybody's just stopped trying to work out who goes next. A mini roundabout would be so much easier, Guernsey, I tell you. Go to the UK, have a look at our roundabouts and see what they're all about. I love a mini roundabout. You know where you are with them. I mean, look, this car's got stuck here. <laughs> These filters are nuts. And that this parish even has its own flag, St Andrew's Parish. And they've got it flying. No Guernsey flag in sight. Maybe there's a bit of St Andrew's nationalism on the island. And these signs you see fairly regularly around Guernsey. These are bad news. It means your bus stop's not working or uh, the road's closed, something like that. And they will tell you when it's from and then just write UFN. An acronym I was never familiar with until I moved to Guernsey. And it stands for until further notice. So bus stop suspended until when, who knows? Remember my second day here trying to get to work. And the bus stop was just moved and I had no idea how to get to work and I was late. And the website's not very helpful either, so you just gotta work it out and ask the locals. Who are very friendly, by the way, very friendly people, love them. Now we find out why the road's closed. Well, there's a little bobcat tractor and it's digging up the road. Well, not now on a Sunday afternoon, of course, but the road's blocked. I'm sure, it's very essential, whatever they're doing. Another little Guernsey stream. We don't really seem to have rivers there, but we get these nice little streams, look at that. Idyllic. Another French language house, La Colline. Literally, the hill. I guess it kind of is. Some of the famous Guernsey cows, famous for their Guernsey butter and Guernsey milk, which is absolutely delicious. Well, the butter, I don't drink milk, but the butter is great, I love it here. And what should I find around the corner but the, what looks like the headquarters of Guernsey Dairy. And here is the Princess Elizabeth Hospital, the only hospital on the island. But uh, this is King's apparently, the premier health club in the area. People kept telling me to sign up there. Well, I went nice and common. I went to Beau Sejour because it's right near where I live, which is just the general leisure centre, really. I don't need any of this fancy stuff. Well, to be honest, I just like to go wherever's nearest because then you actually go. If you've got to walk 15 or 20 minutes every time you want to go to the gym, likelihood is you're going to go less often. Well, the parking rules are a bit strange around here as well. Look, parking limited to 23 hours, so it's free, but once a day, you have to go out for at least an hour. And then you can come back and park there again. How weird. Right, we're coming back home into St. Peter Port now. It might be the capital of Guernsey, but it's a lot different to the last capital I lived in, Brussels. Look at this. Little palm trees. Little paths which lead nowhere. Well, you still get that in Brussels. These little cobbled walls, it's beautiful, perfect. Just uh, on my descent now into St. Peter Port, and look, there's the Church of Scotland, St. Andrew's in the Grange here. Who knew Guernsey had a Church of Scotland? There you go. Oh my God, look, it's Robbie Williams. <laughs> For some reason, they got a cardboard cutout of Robbie Williams and Jerry Halliwell in this, uh, what looks like a travel agent. And this is the Peterport Town Centre. And look how empty it is. At quarter to five on a Sunday afternoon in January. So here we are outside one of my favourite pubs in Guernsey, the Thomas de la Rue. Hopefully they've got a Sunday roast left for me. Anyway, I'm gonna be here until at least April. So if you've got anything in particular you wanna see from the Channel Islands, uh, then let me know in the comments. Really nice to show you around Guernsey a little bit. This was meant to be kind of just a hike, but it turned into uh, one of those, uh, some things you might not know about Guernsey videos. I think that's what we'll call this one. All right, guys, it's been fun. Uh, see you on the next one, take care. Over and out from St. Peter Port.